Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will really want to thank God that he has given us another opportunity to meet here. This is Pastor Dr. Ray Kessis bringing you the message once again. Uh, the message we would like to share today is titled, When God Has No Option. When God Has No Option. When God Has No Option. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, unless you bless us, we cannot be blessed. Unless you teach us, we cannot be taught. Unless you guide us, we cannot be guided. Unless you simplify, we cannot understand. We pray for your direction so that your word can be clear. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. When God has no option. How can God, for whom nothing is impossible, have no option? How is it possible that a God, for whom nothing is impossible, can have no option? You see, friends, God, in his own choice, created you and me to be free to choose. God decided that you and me will be free to make any choice that we want. And so God decided that though he can force you and force me to do exactly what he wants, he will not force us. And therefore, our choices can leave God with no option. When God has no option, God has no option when it comes to our choices. Not because he can't force us, but because God has chosen not to force us. When God has no option. Listen, my brothers and sisters, our choices can leave God with no option. Our choices can leave God with no option. Look at what the Bible says in Second Chronicles chapter 36, verse 15 to 16. Second Chronicles chapter 36, verse 15 to 16. The Bible says, The Lord, the God of their fathers, sent persistently to them by his messengers because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. Verse 16. But the people God was had compassion on, the Bible says, but they kept mocking the messengers that God sent. They despised the words of God. They scoffed at the prophets of God until the wrath of the Lord rose against his people and there was no remedy and God had no option. That God tried to save the Israelites. He had given them freedom of choice. God tried everything. God tried. He sent messenger after messenger. God sent prophet after prophet, but they kept refusing. They laughed at the prophets. They made fun of the prophets. They dismissed the prophets. They did many things against the will of God. And the Bible says it reached a point where God had no option. Our message today, when God has no option, because God, who can force us to do things, has decided to allow us to do them the way we want, it leaves God at a situation where he has no option. When God has no option. When it comes to your freedom to choose what you want, God has no option. God can send someone after someone, but he has no option if you refuse to listen. God can plead with you daily to get baptized, but if you refuse, 
God has no option. God can plead with you to obey your parents. God can plead with you to love your wife. God can plead with you to love your husband. God can plead with you to attend church. God can plead with you to give tithe and offering. God can plead with you and send messenger after messenger. God can send prophet after prophet. God can send message after message, sermon after sermon, audio sermons, video sermons, parent advice. God can do everything. But if you refuse and I refuse, God has no option. The message today is when God has no option. When God has done everything to save you, when God has done everything to save me, when God has done everything to ensure our salvation and we refuse, we reach a point where God has no option but to remove us from his world. God has no option than to clear us out from his world so that his world can run with only people who are willing to follow him and obey him willingly when God has no option. You see, friends, if we totally reject the call of God, God will be left with no option but to destroy us, to destroy us whom he created and he loved. God did this during Noah's time. God preached through Noah for 120 years. Nobody was interested in what God was saying. Nobody cared about what God was saying. Nobody gave a damn about the message of God. And God had no option. God made an ark and told people to get in. They didn't want to get in. They refused. God even sent animals to go in so that in that miracle, people would wake up and say, hey, something is happening. But they refused. When God has no option, when Noah and his family went in, God closed the door and for seven days he thought somebody will come knocking and say, I want to be saved, but they refused. When God has no option, he brought the rain, he brought the flood, and it was forever too late for the people to plead to get into the ark when God has no option. This time round, God will not do this during using a flood. God will do this using fire in hellfire. The fire in hell is the clearest demonstration that God has given us freedom and he has no option but to clear us out of the world because he has no option. He can't force us. He has left us to make our own choices. Hell is the greatest sign of freedom that God uh, has given us freedom of choice. Hell is a point where God has no option. Hell is necessary. Where there is freedom, then hell is necessary. The Bible teaches about hell. When you read the Bible, the Bible does teach about hell. You see, we attend schools with freedom of to attend or not to attend. A school is not a prison. In prison, you can't leave. You must stay there until your time is done. But in a school, if you are tired and you don't want to stay, you can walk out and tell the teachers, I'm leaving this school. I don't want to be in this school. And your choice will be respected. That freedom to leave the school and never pursue studies means that there is freedom of choice. But in a prison, you can't choose to live. And this world is not a prison. And hell is a demonstration that is not a prison. The Bible uses several words when it's referring to hell. You will find Hebrew words like Sheol in Genesis chapter 37 verse 35. You will find words like Tar, Taros in Greek used in 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 4. You will find words like heads. In Greek again, in Acts chapter 2, verse 27, you will find words like Jehenna. And Swahili people call it Jehanam, used in Matthew chapter 5, verse 22, verse 29, and verse 30. Again in Greek. Why is hell necessary, friends? Because our God is a holy God and he cannot continue looking at us 
sinning continuously, harming each other continuously, and he just keeps quiet forever. Hell is necessary because God must put an end to sin and our sinfulness when we have refused to repent. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, that God is light and in him there is no darkness. In Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 13, the Bible says that the eyes of God are pure and they cannot continue beholding evil. And so Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29 says, Our God is a consuming fire. God who is holy will not continue seeing us continue in sin and we refuse to repent at some point because of his own goodness he will have to destroy evil and remove evil from this world the bible says in revelation chapter 21 verse 27 that nothing that defileth can enter that new jerusalem first john chapter 3 verse 8 god's object is to destroy the works of evil and revelation chapter 5 verse 13 God will eventually have a clean universe in which every rational creature will praise him. So hell is necessary because of the goodness of God. God is too good to continue allowing evil. So he must remove evil people from this world because they have rejected him. You see, friends, it's not because God loves to kill people. The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 30 to 32, and Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 11, the Bible says God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, and we have read this repeatedly, God is not willing that any should perish. He is patient. John chapter 3, verse 16, God so loved the world so that whoever believes in him will not perish. But those who refuse to believe in him, there is no other option. When God has no option, they will have to perish. And that's why the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 28 verse 21, that punishment or hell is God's strange act. Something that gods find it difficult to do, but he will have to do. Listen, friends, when people end up in hell, it is because they made a choice, not because God has forced them there. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 36, that all that hate God love death. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 11, a point comes when God says, he that is filthy, let him continue being filthy. Listen, my brothers and sisters, hell is a sign that God has no option by his own choice. And so, are the fires of hell burning now? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 13, verse 40 to 42, that the wicked will be cast into a furnace of fire at the end of the world. So hell is not burning now until the end of the world. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it says the unjust are reserved unto the day of judgment. That means nobody is burning now until that end of time. And so where is hell? Is hell somewhere under the earth where the devil is with a big fork? Those are stories you read in books. That's not in the Bible. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 20 verse 7 to 9 that they went up on the breath of the earth and fire came down from God and destroyed them. Hell is right here on earth. When all the righteous are taken to heaven and sinners and Satan remain on earth, this earth will be hell. It will burn and destroy. They will burn right here where we are today, but the righteous will have gone to heaven. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 31, sinners will be punished on earth. This is where hell is, and hell is in future. It's not happening now. So how long will the fires of hell burn? The Bible says in Malachi chapter 4, verse 1 to 3, that sinners will be burned to ashes. In Jude chapter 1, verse 7, Sodom and Gomorrah suffered eternal fire. And you know Sodom and Gomorrah is no longer burning. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 6, Sodom and Gomorrah were reduced to ashes. The fires will not burn forever. God has no pleasure in seeing people burning forever. Listen, friends, this is what God says in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 4. What more could I have done? Matthew 23, 37, how often would I have gathered my children, but they refuse? John chapter 5, verse 4, you will not come to me 
that you will have life. That means when hell comes, God has no option. May we make a choice for God before it reaches a point where God has no option. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to make a choice for you today. Let us not postpone. Let us not delay. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. When God has no option, has no option.